Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of Lincoln Creek, Nebraska. And we've gotten all of our equipment cleaned up here from soybean harvesting. And we're getting ready to dive into corn. I'm so excited. So we uh, spent a little bit of time playing with our augers, trying to move things around. There's just no good way for us to use one of those bins as a wet bin and auger things right back into the corn dryer. Um, I moved things around every which way. We would have had to lay things out just a little bit different to get that to work. So I appreciate that suggestion in the last video, but uh, we're gonna be running the augers a bit manually up there, I think. But today is all about corn harvest and it's gonna take a while for us to fill up the dryer anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and get these combines sent out to field 50. Field 50 is this field up here nearish to the farm. It's a decent sized field, but not that big. And so we're gonna get started there today and see how things go for corn harvest. And don't forget, if you're enjoying today's video, drop a like, it helps the channel out immensely. So we're coming up here on a field 50 on our right. If I recall, the driveway is actually in this far corner. So we're gonna head on down there and open up the field by the driveway. That's gonna be the easiest spot to get the trucks in and out of the field, I think. And we're just gonna go ahead and get everything unfolded here so that I can pull right in and clear a little bit of this corner out. Always makes uh, life easier with course play if we've got the field opened up a smidge here and I'm gonna jump right into getting our course play course set up here on this field so we're gonna pick field 50 I'm selecting this position on the map as our corner we are gonna do two headland passes we've got multiple tools and a working width of 12.2 so let's see what this is gonna look like uh, we also need to make sure we're going on the up and down rows as usual, course plays a little bit uh, concerned with my choices here on direction, but that's okay. Our lead combine here is going to be on the left side. And away we go. So while he gets started, we can jump right into the next. We're going to copy this existing course and we're going to save it. Field 50. 2x harvester we're gonna be on the right for this one and we just need to get everything all unfolded here and we might as well take a little bit out this other way just so that we're not leaving any straggly bits as we get started and we're gonna tell course play to uh, get started here. I do have everything getting put into swaths here. We are going to attempt to bale everything here. We should probably get a baler going on our bean fields at some point here soon. But uh, I wanna make sure that we've got the corn fields all set up and running here before we jump into that next job. So we're gonna just focus on this for now and we'll get that baling started up here probably next episode we'll start working on baling so we're gonna wait until we get the field opened up to really set this truck into a great position but until then i think what we're gonna do is just spin it around here and park it up here on the road alongside this field that'll give me enough room to come and unload on the road here i think by the time we get this field opened up, we should be able to come at the truck from the other side over there. And given that this is corn, we probably need to get going here to the end of the field. I'm sure these combines are starting to uh, maybe not get full, but get a good amount of corn in them. So as long as we're here, we're going to grab this rear combine, get the corn that he's got going. It looks like the other guy's actually gonna stop with his auger out over that grass area and let me unload him, so no cut in, which is actually appreciated. Looks like we hit our vehicle convoy limit here, so we're just gonna finish unloading this guy since we're here. There we go. 
and we'll zip up here and uh, unload this other guy. Now I have discovered that these little sections like that that he's missing, that's from when I hit the escape button and go in to save the game. And so the save lagged my game out enough that it caused uh, the course play driver, the workers, to skip a little bit of corn there. So that's unfortunate. But we are going to be able to grab this uh, guy here before we get to the corner, which is good. Hopefully get the bulk of his corn unloaded here. Looks like he's going to stop and wait since the corner maneuver is going to put him in a position where he can't easily unload. And then we're going to back on out of his way here and we'll let him do his thing in the corner here. And we're already at 50% of our grain cart and we've only made it down the length of the field. So making it all the way around the field might be a little bit of a stretch actually, especially given that the far side of that field is a bit curvy, which means you're going to have to cover more ground to get down that side of the field. So we're going to hopefully be able to unload these guys one more time down here on the corner of the field here somewhere. And then, uh, yeah, we're already going to be needing to dump into a truck. I'm excited. I love corn harvest. I'm a little bit nervous about the size of the corn stock mound there, though. That seems a bit excessive. So we're going to follow in behind him. I'm just looking here. There's not really any way I'm going to be able to unload him along this edge. I was hoping to be able to unload him as we went up towards that corner, but there is no room here before the neighbor's field. So we'll wait until he gets around the corner and see if I can sneak it in uh, before we get into those trees. It looks like there might be a bit of a uh, grass edge there for a little bit at least. So I'm going to zip behind him here while he's opening up this corner because there's not a lot of room over here. So we're going to have to be pretty quick if we want to empty the combine out here as he goes up this short little row here. Going to have to guess where that auger's going to be, but we've only got until we get to that tree up there to get a bit of this combine unloaded, keep him moving down this uh, side of the field here. We're going to take what we can get though just because uh, otherwise we're going to have to wait for multiple cut-ins here. Hopefully that gets him around that part of the field there though. And we'll just uh, get in this other track here and be ready to catch the secondary combine as he comes up here. It's always tricky trying to unload around a curve. Generally tried to avoid doing this too much when I was uh, actually farming. It's a great way to uh, lose corn out the side of the wagon. But we're getting quite a bit here. The grain cart's uh, not full yet, but it's going to be full soon. And... Uh, now that we got that guy emptied out here, we're going to zip down here to the end of the field and just see how far that lead combines managed to get with what little bit we were able to empty out of him. It looks like he's still going here. He's got to be getting close to full, though. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we emptied more than I anticipated. I'd really, really love for him to get to the corner here, though. I think once we get to the corner, although I guess we've got a ton of these telephone poles again here. I'd really like it if he could get to the corner of this field and make the turn, although we've got a lot of these power poles here. So I'm not sure, not sure if we're going to be able to unload him along the road here or not. I've done a great job of buying a lot of fields with power poles alongside the edge of the fields. Oh, here we go. Can I do it? You can do it. Start unloading before we hit the end. Yes. All right. We're going to stop and let him unload before he does his corner maneuver here. This is going to work out a lot better for us. 
than trying to monkey with uh, unloading him while we're navigating all these poles. Now, we're full, so I'm going to speed up here and get out of his way and head right on down the road here to this truck and see what we can do to unload into it. Now, this is 1,400 bushels in the grain cart here, 1,425. So I'm curious to see how much that puts into this truck. I know we, uh, I didn't really pay attention to how big these semi-trailers were. So hopping into the semi here, 1,400 bushels is a little over 50%. So two full grain carts is going to fill up that semi completely, which is awesome. We've got our lead combine having uh, taken out that corner and it finally is heading down this way. So we're going to go ahead and get in position. I'm assuming he's going to come down these long rows next. So we'll just wait for him here. Hopefully that secondary combine is going to be able to catch up. I know we should probably head back there and empty him as well. In fact, why don't we actually do that? I am positive that he's getting full here. And that'll keep us out of the way as the lead combine works on making his turn. He's almost full here already again. His flashers are on. So we're filling everybody up here quite quickly. Now this field is somewhat small, so we're going to be able to hopefully keep up with these combines. But we might get to a point where we need to look at setting up a course play course finally for our grain cart to help us to keep up with things while we're dealing with the trucks back up at the farm because with all these augers that's the one thing that we usually don't have to deal with is dumping the trucks up at the farm we usually let course play or auto drive handle all of that for us but given the nature of using augers that's just a little bit more of a pain to do and so we're going to be doing a lot of the handling up at the farm ourselves and so if we're going to be up there doing that ourselves then we probably need to set up the course play driver to handle this grain cart here so as soon as i get these two combines unloaded here i think that's probably what we're going to do next is set up the course play course and just kind of see how the course play driver handles it now, once we get the field fully opened up with our two headland passes off everywhere, I think course play will be able to handle the pathfinding just a little bit better. And we're just pulling in mountains of corn, which is awesome. Our grain carts are already almost half full here. And the nice thing about the trailers we're using is they're single hopper, so we won't have to monkey with any of the double hopper craziness with course play here. Now, we forgot to set up a land-style mode to cut through the middle of this field with these combines. And so we are going to run into some problems where course play is going to end up with the auger on the wrong side here for unloading. And corn has enough volume that that's actually going to be a problem for us. So that's a one thing I didn't think about when we set these courses up. So we're going to set up an overload course starting right here and have it actually come out here and unload on the road, I think. So we're going to put our weight point right here. And I'm not going to fully unload just yet. We'll uh, let it do that once we get full here. And I'm going to put my stop point right here. We're going to select both of our combines as targets and tell him to drive course and we're unloading the lead combine here as well on the headland he's still gonna do his funny turn maneuver here because we're technically making headland passes but i'm impressed with how course plays continued to develop here where it's smart enough to back up a bit and get out of the way all right, so course play is here picking up its last little bits. It should uh, head on up to the truck to unload at this point. We'll see how well it does finding a path back up to the other headland here. Hopefully not through the middle of the field. We do have avoid fruit settings on. And I brought out another semi here since our first semi is about to be full. 
So while course play figures out how to get down here and unload into our semi, we're going to try and uh, get this one turned around and set up right behind it. We should have uh, enough room here to hopefully, oh, crush the neighbor's sunflowers. Um, hopefully uh, get lined up here. It's a little snug, but I don't think we're going to be in the way of our course play course here at all. And then I can uh, pull this guy forward into the appropriate spot once we've uh, filled this truck up and sent it on its way. Our course play driver is a coming. Hopefully he doesn't uh, run into anything with that auger hanging out here. We tried to give him a decent course enough. Hopefully enough room everywhere he needs to go. Looks good so far. We just hop in here with him. We can see that he is unloading. Should uh, fill this thing up. We did put a little bit in there, so we'll have some left in the grain cart. And he's probably going to go on his way here unless he's got more than the... I think I set it at 10%. We open up course play. He should drive on... Oh, if he's less than 5%. So as long as he's got more than 5% left, he should sit here and wait for me to move the trucks, which is actually perfect. So let's grab this truck, and we're just going to pull him up here and get him out of the way. It looks like we've got a bit of a texture issue there with our corn. That's all right. And we're just going to send this guy right back up to the farm here. We'll go up there and deal with him in a couple of minutes when we see the message. And then we'll pull this truck right up into this same spot. Should work out fine. The course play driver should detect us and put his auger out, I think. Something like that should work out perfectly. So we'll leave this semi parked here. Looks like all the combines have gotten uh, filled up here in the meantime, but that's okay. We won't have to switch trucks every time like this. So hopefully Horse play can get back out here in the field and figure out how to get over to this first combine without any struggles here. It's always a bit nerve-wracking with course play the first time, trying to see if it's going to figure out how to do what it needs to do. New fields, new maps, new equipment. I'm not sure I've run course play with this particular combination of things yet. But he seems to be figuring it out. He's figured out he's going to need to loop around to get lined up the right way as well. It's always uh, interesting with the articulated tractors and such. Um, they tend to have a little bit more of a struggle with pathfinding, I find, uh, than the normal style tractors. It's why I use a lot of regular style tractors or like with John Deere's the RTs and things that aren't articulated they tend to work out the best but this is working out just fine we're unloading this lead uh, combine everybody's moving and we've got some space left in the truck so I feel confident at this point that I can leave this operation for a few minutes and head back up to the farm and figure out how to get this corn into the bins it looks like we're alternating between soybeans and corn textures in this semi for some reason. So here we've got the auger for loading up the dryer. The dryer's stopped running at this point because it has dried all of the corn that we'd put in there earlier in the day. We're still technically in the same day of seasons. We could probably have moved the clock forward one more day but we're just going to keep running with it since uh, with the way we've got season set up right now, each day actually represents uh, a few weeks of time. So we're going to back this thing up as good as we can straight into this auger. Let's get our camera lined up a little bit better here. We can see what we're doing. Oh, that flashing texture is going to drive me nuts. I should have left the tarp closed, I suppose. Here, we're going to get rid of that. Oh, there we go. So much better. So we're going to back this right up to the auger and dump it in. And you can see our grain dryer came on right away. 
we've got everything more or less lined up. It looks like our big auger could use to be shifted back just a smidge. All right, we used a little bit of super strength to tweak that. That's a lot better than it was. We'll run with that for now. And uh, yeah, we've got everything coming in here. Like I said in the other video, we have to clip our tires through the uh, hopper here just a little bit with the way things are set up. I should probably expand those dump triggers a little bit, but that's all right. And there we go. Well, we've got a full load of corn from this semi into our grain dryer here. So let's take a look and see what that does to the capacity of the corn dryer. So this thing has uh, apparently got an invisible wet tank because we've already put 13% of our, uh, we've only put 13% of its capacity in there as wet corn. So this thing can hold an astronomical amount of wet corn right now. Um, we'd probably want to dial that down a bit. I don't think this thing is uh, big enough to justify holding, uh, what would that be, eight plus uh, semis of corn. There's just no way you'd put eight semis of corn into uh, the corn dryer, but I guess that'll just, uh, we'll just call that our simulated wet bin and run with that. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and send this guy back up here to field 50 and hop back over and see what's going on in the cornfield. All right, so we're back up here at the cornfield, and it looks like our combines have started working on the up and down rows finally. The grain cart here seems to be in an inconvenient location for when they get to the end of the field, but uh, they'll probably get full and need to be moved before then. So we're going to grab the semi truck that we've got back up here from the farm and get it into an appropriate position so it's out of the way and ready for loading here. It looks like we've not had to dump into the lead semi here again since we left, so things are moving along at an appropriate pace here. If we hop over here to the lead combine, he is starting to get full. He's at 70% now. And so it looks like he might just make the end, but I think at 90% he's going to stop and cut over into the other row. Maybe not. Maybe he's going to keep going here, which is going to uh, end in an epic crash. Come on, course play. You know he's there. Oh, look at that. The driver figured it out. He didn't crash. Everybody got out of each other's way. What more could you ask for? That's right, folks. We may not have any bloopers this episode. Well, this guy is full now, so he's going to have to wait for the green cart to circle around, which he'll probably stop and get that first combine before he comes all the way up here. Maybe not the most efficient uh, way to unload things, but probably detected that this guy wasn't in a position to be unloaded at that point in time. I don't know. Either way, it's working out. We're getting stuff done. We're not crashing into each other. I like it. Well, let's head down here. He's probably actually going to be pretty close to full after unloading this combine, too. This other combine had to stop because we are in uh, vehicle convoy mode where we like to keep the two combines away from each other a little bit so this guy's trying to figure out i think probably how to uh swing around and pull back into that row looking good i like it when a plan comes together and then he should fill up after unloading this guy in fact he probably won't even finish unloading this combine uh, before he fills up here so He's going to need to swing back around and go empty into the semi-trucks here. Nicely done. Nicely done. We're getting a little bit of a track up in the air there as we turn, but... And we're heading out to unload. I'm excited. This is working out great. 
horseplay has got itself under control for a change. Everything's moving along smoothly here. However, I think this is a great place to wrap up today's episode. That's all for today. Kedok out. We're not crashing into anything. We're not driving over any crops. Oh, I, I said that just a smidge too early. <laughs>